few months ago, my sister called and asked if I knew how to make bacon jam. At that point, I had never even heard about it, and the idea didn't quite appeal to me. But she sent me a link that had a recipe on it, and of course, I had to try it once I read it. Bacon jam, if you don't know, is more of a relish. It's definitely a condiment, but you can put it on just about anything you can think of. It's great on biscuits, you can put it on toast, but you can also put it on a burger, you can put it on mashed potatoes, you can put it on a baked potato. Just about anything that you can think of that tastes good with bacon tastes even better with this stuff. So let me show you how to do it. You start off with a pound and a half of bacon, and if you're going to do this, use a good high quality bacon, because the flavor will concentrate and intensify, and you want it to be the best you can find. All I did was cut this into small pieces, I browned it off in my big Dutch oven, and I scooped all the crispy little bacon bits out into this little bowl. Now if you can see, down in here, I've got the grease. Normally this is when you get rid of the grease, but not in this case. You're going to hang on to this. The grease will come off later, but we're going to use it first. This is all that goes into baking jam, and 90% of this means walking away from the stove and leaving it alone. But what we're going to start out with first are two great big yellow onions that I sliced up, and that's an entire head of garlic. I just peeled the cloves and just gave it a rough chop. So I'm going to put the bacon grease, the onions, and the garlic on the stove. I'm going to just render it down for about, I'd say about 8 minutes, maybe 10, just until it gets real nice and translucent and you can start to smell it. And I'll come back and show you what happens next. Right, come over here and take a look, because this is our next step. Onions have had about, right about 10 minutes. And the garlic is in there too. And you, Yes, I left it in the bacon grease. Trust me, it won't all be there later. The smell is out of this world. But you see how all the little bits and pieces of bacon have come up off the bottom? And the onions are starting to caramelize. And the fragrance. Oh, good lord. Yes. All right, so at this stage, you're ready to go on to the next one. All right, take all your bacon back in the pot. And this is what's going to turn it into the, the bacon jam or relish. This is one cup of black coffee. And again, use a good, strong coffee. The flavors in this are all going to concentrate. So you want each of your ingredients to be good because the flavors of each thing will dominate. All right, that's one half cup of apple cider vinegar. One half cup of light brown sugar, teaspoon of black pepper, and you do want a good bit. Hello, little one. So he goes right in there. And this is less than one eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. You want a little bit of heat, but this will cook down. And like I said, everything will concentrate. You can add heat a little bit in a minute. Wait, you just go back here, but you can't take it out. I had to take a little break. My assistant was talking to me, and I couldn't remember what I was saying. So you bring this up to a simmer, just like this, with just those ingredients in it. I'm now going to cut the heat down. I want it barely to simmer, because this is going to sit back here on the back of my stove for about three to four hours. All you have to do is come back, eh, maybe every 30 minutes or so, give it a little stir, and leave it alone. Don't cover it. You want all the moisture to come out and leave the concentrated flavors behind. All right, so I'm gonna move in, and I'll be back in a little bit to show you what it looks like. Okay, on your pie crust, we've now had a full 40 minutes, and I want you to see this. See that? It's perfectly done, perfectly beautiful. All right, here we go, baking jam. At this point, we've got a full four hours. And if you look at the recipe on the thrillbillygourmet.com, you'll see where I actually ended up adding an extra step, which I didn't tell you about. I know it's sneaky. I skimmed a little bit of the fat from it. And that's only because this particular batch of bacon, despite the fact that it wasn't a better quality bacon, was more fatty than most. I wanted to get rid of that so that the remainder of what I had could caramelize. There's still some good amount of fat in there. We're gonna get rid of it, but I'll show you how. All you do now, it's had four hours. We're gonna pop it into a jar. And I haven't done anything except come back every few minutes, maybe half an hour or 45 minutes, and give it a stir, just to make sure it wasn't scorching on the bottom. Ooh, I'm gonna have more than 
can give some of it as a present, and I can make myself look really good. Keep the rest for myself. All right, so we see this. That is where, gonna, we're, where we are going to take our next step, okay? So all I'm going to do at this point is clean up the outside of my jar. I'm going to take a clean rag, and I'm going to wipe down the edge of the jar. I'm going to put that in the refrigerator and I'm gonna let it cool completely. The remainder of the fat that's in there. I didn't realize, well, actually, I just realized how dark it was in the last video. So actually, that's what you're looking for. You see it? Okay. So now I'm gonna go clean up the edge of my jar, and I'll be back in a minute to show you the next step.